What would you trust with your life on the highway? A truck built like a fortress or one built to think for itself? That question is not as simple as it sounds. Across the United States, trucks rule the roads with raw power. Their towering grills and extended hoods are as iconic as they are intimidating. But in Europe, a different philosophy reigns. There, trucks are compact, highly engineered, and loaded with technology designed to think faster than any driver can. This is not just about performance, it is about survival. As the spotlight swings between continents, crash test footage reveals two very different approaches. On one side, American rigs powering through the open road, and on the other, European trucks slamming into walls in controlled environments their dummies protected by airbags and collapsible steering systems. Europe is pushing new mandates. Volvo already has an airbag for trucks, and these are not just differences, they are decisions. In this safety showdown, we're putting European powerhouses against American workhorses. The outcome might shift your beliefs or ignite a debate that refuses to cool down. The foundation of a truck's safety starts long before the engine turns over. It starts with a mindset. In the United States, trucks are built for toughness. Long-nosed cabs like Peterbilt, Freightliner, and Kenworth dominate the highways, designed with durability and ease of repair in mind. Steel frames, timeless bodywork, and systems that prioritize mechanical simplicity over digital complexity have been the standard for decades. Many fleets prefer trucks that can be fixed in the field, and drivers trust the old-school feel that gives them control. In contrast, European truck builders designed with prevention in mind. Cab over engine designs offer better visibility, shorter vehicle lengths, and less blind spots. These trucks are built for cities with narrow streets and safety standards that leave no room for tradition. Most come with integrative safety systems as standard, not as upgrades. Collision avoidance, fatigue monitoring, lane assist, and smart braking systems are expected. According to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the U.S., the goal is to reduce fatalities through behavioral change and enforcement. Euro NCAP, the European New Car Assessment Program, is more aggressive, aiming to engineer safety into the truck before it hits the road. As one analyst put it bluntly, America is still building trucks like it's 1985, while Europe is building them for 2030. If a crash happens, what matters most is how the truck performs under pressure. In the United States, that performance is not always guaranteed. There is no mandatory frontal crash test for Class A trucks. The largest and heaviest vehicles on American roads are not required to prove their crash worthiness in real-world conditions before entering service. Europe has taken the opposite route. Trucks must pass strict tests. Under EN 1264-2, which measures cargo restraint, and ECE R29, which tests cab integrity and driver survival in rollover and frontal crashes, these tests are brutal by design, replicating high-impact scenarios to ensure structural performance. And truck by truck, the safety gap starts to show. The Volvo FH comes standard with a reinforced cab a driver's side airbag, and a built-in collision warning system. The Scania R-Series adds rollover protection and a front frame designed to absorb crash energy. On the American side, though, the Kenworth W900 doesn't include a driver airbag. And while modern safety features like collision mitigation can be added, they're not standard. Freightliner's Cascadia is making progress with advanced driver assistance systems, but many of those are still optional for most fleets. So when a crash becomes inevitable, the question becomes simple. Would you rather be in a Volvo FH with multiple safety layers or a Peterbilt relying on chrome and legacy? However, safety is no longer just about seat belts and strong frames. Today, it is about the computer systems working alongside the driver to avoid danger entirely. In Europe, this technology is installed into nearly every modern truck. Lane keeping assistance, adaptive cruise control, emergency braking, and driver fatigue monitoring are standard features. They are not offered as luxury upgrades. They are required to meet regulatory expectations. In the United States, these technologies exist but have not been widely adopted. Freightliner's newer Cascadia models come with optional ADAS packages, but many fleets still order trucks without them to reduce costs. Peterbilt and Kenworth continue to rely heavily on driver skill and traditional systems. There are no national mandates for lane departure systems or fatigue monitoring. It is left to individual manufacturers and buyers to decide what is worth investing in. And that brings up an uncomfortable question. If the technology to prevent accidents exists, why is it not standard in every American truck? 
Should in saving lives surpass upfront costs or old school pride? Blind spots are also not just an inconvenience, they're a hazard, especially when sharing the road with pedestrians, cyclists, and smaller vehicles. European trucks solve this problem by design. Cab over layouts bring the driver closer to the road, dramatically improving the direct line of sight. Trucks like the Mercedes Actros now come equipped with digital mirrors and exterior cameras, giving the driver a 360-degree view with minimal distortion. And these systems help eliminate entire blind zones. American trucks present a clear contrast. The long nose design stretches the cab forward and limits the driver's ability to see what is happening close to the front. Most of the models still use traditional mirrors and lack blind spot detection technology. And in practical terms, a pedestrian walking in front of a Volvo FH would be visible to the driver, and that same person could vanish completely though in front of a Kenworth W900. So it makes you stop and think, how many lives are in danger because truck makers care more about looks or old school style than giving drivers a clear view of the road? Meanwhile, the numbers speak for themselves. In the United States, truck-related deaths have shown a modest but important decline. In 2023, crashes involving large trucks resulted in 5,472 deaths, down from 5,969 in 2022. That's an 8% decrease, marking the second consecutive year of an improvement. Still, large trucks were involved in 9% of all vehicles in fatal crashes. That's not small, especially when you consider the large trucks make up only about 5% of all registered vehicles and account for roughly 10% of all vehicle miles traveled, according to the recent U.S. Department of Transportation data. In Europe, road deaths continue to decline. In 2023, around 20,400 people were killed in road crashes across the European Union, a slight drop of 1% compared to the year before. But heavy goods vehicles remain a serious concern. They make up less than 3% of all vehicles on the road, yet they are roughly 14-15% to of all road deaths. Of course, those killed in crashes involving heavy trucks, about a quarter of a year are vulnerable road users, such as pedestrians and cyclists. NTSB Chair Jennifer Homedy has issued clear warnings. Speaking at the AASHTO Safety Summit, she emphasized, In the US, 95% of all transportation fatalities take place on our roads. So, by far, roads are our most deadly mode. She added a powerful message at the Transportation Research Board annual meeting. We're fighting for the 43,000 people who die on our roads every year, and the millions more who are injured. Zero just became real, didn't it? The message is clear. Europe continues to make progress in road safety, but crashes involving heavy trucks still carry serious risks. In the United States, safety is improving, but the number of truck-related deaths remain high compared to how few of these trucks are actually on the road. The US does not yet require modern safety technologies like automatic emergency braking or lane departure warning for heavy trucks. A federal proposal, the NPRM, is under review to address this, but the requirement is not yet in force. For lighter vehicles, a new standard, the FMV SS-127, will mandate AEB systems, including pedestrian detection, by September 2029. Some trucking industry groups have shown resistance to safety regulations, although direct examples involving the American Trucking Associations are not well documented. And there's a new broader pattern of the industry pushback. For instance, some automakers have challenged new safety rules in court, claiming that the requirements are not realistic with today's technology or would add too much cost. Advanced safety systems also tend to be expensive. For many fleets, especially smaller ones trying to control costs, these technologies are often seen as unaffordable. And as a result, adoption remains low even when the technology is available. In addition to cost, there is a cultural hurdle. Some drivers view modern safety systems as intrusive or unreliable. Many are not trained formally on how to use them and instead rely on trial and error. And this mindset slows down the use and trust of newer technology across the industry. Now, is America sacrificing safety for tradition and cost? Although effective, safety technologies exist. Adoption remains inconsistent across the US, hindered by outdated regulations, economic constraints, and cultural resistance. The future of trucking is already unfolding and it's moving toward a world that's cleaner and far safer if we're ready to embrace it. Volvo's Vera concept offers a striking vision of what tomorrow's logistics might look like. Fully electric and completely driverless, Vera is built without a traditional cab. Its sleek, low-profile design is optimized for short, repetitive routes, such as shuttling goods between logistics hubs and ports. And this is not just a speculative idea. Vera has already been tested in a controlled environment at the port of Gothenburg in Sweden. 
signaling that driverless freight is closer than many think. At the same time, Daimler is putting electric power and safety at the heart of its long-haul transformation. The Mercedes-Benz e-Actro 600, which entered production in late 2024, is a battery electric powerhouse designed for heavy-duty transport. With more than 600 kilowatt hours of battery capacity and a range of around 500 kilometers, it's built for endurance and efficiency. And its recognition as the International Truck of the Year 2025 highlights its innovation and the momentum it brings to the industry's evolution. Freightliner, Daimler's US brand, is also making significant progress with the E-Cascadia, field tested with fleets like Penske and NFL since 2019. And this all-electric version of the best-selling Cascadia officially went into production in 2022. And now operating in real-world conditions, the E-Cascadia shows that electric freight is not just a European ambition. It's gaining traction in the United States, too. On the regulatory front, Europe is setting an aggressive pace with new general safety regulations beginning in July 2025. All new trucks sold in the European Union must come equipped with advanced driver assistance systems, including emergency braking, lane keeping assistance, and intelligent speed assistance. This technology uses road data to help vehicles stay within legal speed limits. And these standards will continue to tighten through 2026 and 2029. And additional rules, such as direct vision standards, aim to improve the driver's ability to see pedestrians and cyclists clearly from the cab. So here's the question. If the future's safer, smaller, and smarter, will the US keep up or will it be left behind? In summary, safety is not a feature, it's a choice. Every time a truck rolls off the assembly line, someone decides what matters more. Is it tradition or innovation? Comfort or protection? Cost or human life? Truck drivers are professionals. They deserve the best equipment. Road users deserve to share highways with workhorses designed to avoid disaster. So now it's your turn to weigh in. Should American trucks be held to the same safety standards as their European counterparts? Is the current system doing enough? Or is it time for the industry to evolve? Let us know where you stand. Share your thoughts down in the comments below. The road ahead is wide open, but how we travel it says everything about who we are and what we value.